morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. I hope you're safe and healthy today. I hope your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, who along with the first responders every day are saving lives. Those also that pick up garbage, keep our places clean, and those that make deliveries. For our convenience. Double blessing from the many women that are out here trying to help, rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children, like $200 recovered yesterday by federal agents. 200 human trafficking children victims from child molestation and pedophilia. Those who are also victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on those who actually profit from these things. And double curses on all the nasty perverts that create the demand for this industries. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, children, families, veterans, senior citizens, homeless in the United States of America. And millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, right now. As things stand on Tuesday, we haven't heard anything about Precious Achua yet. Yesterday, I'm going to put in the description box, Ian Begley said that from his sources, he was told that Precious Achua is interested in coming back to the Knicks and he has other suitors. See, this is what, a couple things. Number one, whenever, like yesterday, for example, Mo Bamba was signed by the Clippers and a number of you kept Wanting no Bamba. I'm going to use this example. A number of y'all was like, well, let's go look at no Mo Bamba. And I kept telling you, no, we're not really interested in Mo Bamba. And I gave you the reasons. But he was signed by the Clippers. So somebody's going to come on my channel today and say, we blew it. We should have got Mo Bamba. See, if you're a Philly fan or a Boston fan, you could talk like that. But if you call yourself a Knicks fan and the first thing out your mouth is something negative, go root for Brooklyn. Let's bring out some things. First important news I would like to bring out is right after the finals was over, the next day, the Knicks offered Isaiah Hartenstein the full $72 million. The day after the finals. So he didn't take that right away because he was planning on trying to get more money. Obviously he did. But the Knicks were all over it. And, of course, if you have any respect for the team you claim to be a fan of, you will understand after four years now that the Don doesn't just wait to the last minute. He's not herky-jerky and panicky at the last minute. He already knows him and Brock Alla, Walt Perrin. They didn't already study. They know what's available, and they talk to Tom Thibodeau and what he needs. They know. And some of y'all try to act like you know more than them. That's the, that's, the, that's the ball some of y'all got. But they already studied this. They know what would fit them. They know what their options are. And of course, because they play chess, they keep multiple options available. Somebody said, well, why didn't they go get Goga? Because they didn't want him. Get over it. They didn't want him. Okay? Some of y'all don't get that. You don't know more than Tom Thibodeau about defense and about what center he needs. He knows. So, right now, there are basically three options. As, and we're, we're nitpicking. Because right now, as the Knicks stand today, we ready to play. I don't want to go to war with Mitch Robb as the starter only because of the fact that he has been hurt the last three years. I believe in Mitch Robb, but I believe he'll be more valuable and more available and be a bigger impact in the second unit. Because the way I'm looking at it, me, is like you put Mitchell Robinson with Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, and Deuce McBride, and you got and you can add almost any one of the five starters, and you're going to have a hell of five second unit. It's going to destroy at most everybody else's second unit in the league. There's only a few. Just look at the top teams. The top teams have strong second units. The Knicks can compete with any of them. Any of them. Okay? Any of them. That's the second unit. So that's why, and I'm pretty, I'm confident that we'll get at least 72 games out of Mitch Rob plus the playoffs 
if we have him in that position. If we start him, yes, they're going to be, they'll be held to pay. But the problem with Mitch Rob, the reason he gets hurt, if you look at his injuries, he puts out extraordinary, and Tom Thibodeau talks about it, he puts out extraordinary effort on both ends of the floor. Okay, he really puts his body out there and he just gets, you know, bro, broken bone. When he broke his foot, it was because Brooks Lopez body slammed him and tripped him. Okay, what last year you saw MB grab his leg. I mean, they try to hurt Mitch Rock. Okay, they really do. But, and he knows that. But instead of, you know, saying, you know what, this guy's putting it all out for the New York Knicks. We got people saying, oh, he can't shoot. He can't do this. He can't do that. We need to get rid of him. Some of y'all need to shut the hell up. And don't come on my channel with it because I'm going to blast you. You know it. Okay. So Mitchell Robinson, to me, will be more effective in the second unit. But, and I have no problem. As I said multiple times, starting Jericho Sims. I have no problem. So let's talk about Jericho. First of all, I'm going to tell you all something right now. Jericho's either going to start or be on the second unit this year. Okay, this is going to be his fourth season. He's either going to start or be in the second unit. Why? Because that's how Tibbs does things. He moves players along as they earn stuff. And the thing also that kills me, some of y'all had the nerve to come on my channel talking about Jericho needs to work on his game. This is the league. You don't get here. You don't get to this level without working extraordinarily hard. They don't just give spots. In the league. And you do not stay in the league for three seasons as Jericho has after being Mr. Irrelevant. I mean, he was like, he wasn't Mr. Irrelevant. He was like the 58th pick. That year there was 60 picks. He was like the 58th pick. So he wasn't quite Mr. Irrelevant, but he was down there. You do not stay in the league as the 58th pick for three seasons and get a contract unless you work extremely hard. It's very disrespectful for somebody to come in here and say, Jericho Sims needs to work on this game. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then for somebody to say, well, Mitchell Robinson needs to work on his free throw, free throw shooter. What the hell you think he's doing? See, free throw shooting is mental. Not everybody gets it. Not everybody could do it. Especially big guys like Mitchell Robinson. Some guys can. Some guys can't. It don't mean they ain't working on it. Anyway, today is my rant there, I guess. Some of y'all getting on my last nerve with some of this crap. So anyway, Jer Jericho Sims is going to either be the starter or the backup. He is. Period. End of story. So what we're looking for now is a third stringer. That's what you're looking for. A third stringer. And I like Precious as that third stringer because of his versatility. Not, and, and again, let's stop talking about what he might be able to do. Like, get your mind out of the universe of theory. Look at what he has done. Jericho Sims has guarded every big center in the NBA when the Knicks were shorthanded and done a hell of a job doing it. He could also play the four. In my view, he's actually a better five than he could play the four, but he's built to be a four. Okay? He could be a four. And he is working on his game. And he's going if he can develop a jump shot, and I believe he has the talent. See, that's what it is. Do a player, it's not whether they're working on it. They're working on it every day. But the problem is some guys have the talent to do certain things at the league level, and some guys don't. And I love to bring up Jimmy Fredette. He's my poster child. For players that everybody thought was going to be all that. And they wasn't. Because th this ain't Utah. This is the league. Okay. So you can work on it. <laughs> it don't mean you have the talent to do it. So Jerick, uh, Precious, I believe, has the talent to develop a nice jump shot. Especially from the corners. I think he has a t the talent to do that. When he does. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying about him. Because I believe he has the talent. When he does. It's going to be hell to pay. So I like Precious as that guy to be my 10th guy because you're going to need him. Foul trouble, uh, whatever. Juju needs a break. You're going to need him, you know, at some point in the season. It's not like he's never going to play. He's not going to play 82 games, but he's going to appear in a lot of games. I, I'd say you see him appear in at least 50 or 60 games. He may start some too. So you need that. So I like Precious. And now what Ian reported yesterday is they're talking about the mini mid level about five million dollars. Now, if you look at around the league, some of these guys are signing for three million, two million. Um, you know, the, the, it's really like rich and poor in the league. You got uh, some guys like yesterday, K Cunningham, two hundred million. Scotty Barnes, two hundred seventy million. 
Tatum, three hundred fourteen million. Then you got a lot of brothers at two and three million dollars. So, to me, Precious Achua's market value is eight million dollars. I, I would say eight million a year is a fair price for him. But another thing, you know, in free agency, the money dries up fast. It dries up fast. Okay. So he may not be able to get $8 million, in which case the Knicks could offer him the mini mid-level exception of $5 million. He's going to be available for that. Okay, That's what you're talking about right now. Uh, Mo Wagner is still available. I don't know if the Knicks... To me, at this point of what's available, I do like Mo Wagner. Okay? But I don't know if he's in our price range. I don't know if he's in our price because Mo Wagner just they just did not exercise his eight million dollar club option, but they're going to need him back. And they said they were looking to try to get a deal done with him. So they're going to need him back. He's their backup center. He's behind uh, Carter Jr. So he I think I don't I don't count him as being available, even though he's a free agent. Technically, I do not count Mo Wagner as being available. And I put hold my breath for Mo Wagner. But there's three real options here. I just mentioned Precious. I also mentioned James Wiseman. Now, when I think of James Wiseman, I want you all to consider this, okay? Right now, on the marketplace of the NBA, okay, the marketplace, what's out there, what's available now after all of the signings that took place, is the bottom of the barrel. That's what you're looking at right now. There's two situations there's guys like precious that are trying to weigh their options and that's that might be wiseman i don't know and then there's guys that's hoping to get a job right like if they don't get a job here their next step is europe right so i don't know which one wiseman is in but that's what you're dealing with right now so the guys like precious who has suitors he's gone now he's gonna sit with his agent and decide what's the best move for him Right. Of course, who's going to give him the most money uh, and where's he going to get the opportunity to play. And all of that goes into his decision. It's his decision. With Wiseman, I don't know. Because you got to look at it like this. He was drafted top pick by Golden State. They gave up on him, sent him to Detroit. Detroit did not offer him a contract. So something's wrong. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether he's deciding I don't want to play in Detroit no more or there's something we don't know about. And that's the thing. There's stuff you and me don't know about that the Don and them do know about. So if they decide not to go with Wiseman, you got to understand they have their reasons. We may not understand or know all the details. We don't know if he's out of shape. We don't know if he's hurt. We don't know if it's an attitude problem. We don't know nothing. All we know is what we've seen him in the uniform, right? And in the uniform from University of Memphis, when he just he left early all the way to Golden State to Detroit, I see promise. I see athleticism. I see talent. I see, you know, big time promise. But there's more than what we see sometimes. OK, so that's him. And then there's the guy that they did draft, you know, Huck Porty, Ariel Huck Porty. OK, let's first look at the positives of Huck Porty. And don't I'm not talking about the film we watched for the Knicks. For Tom Thibodeau to give his stamp of approval to draft this man, he must have at least potential to play defense. He has to. Whether he can or not, they will find out. Apparently, 57 other teams thought he could not. Because 57 teams, you know, 57 picks thought he could not. Because 29 teams passed on him. But there must be at least potential. For him to be the Tom Thibodeau type of player, which means a rim protector, block shots, can move on his feet, cover ground. So, as I was saying, in order for you to be even drafted as a big man by the Knicks, you must have first defensive potential. So, I don't know whether... Her Porty will be somebody that they can depend on as a rookie. I doubt it. But he must have two things, at least potentially. He must have defensive potential and he must have a motor. They would not draft him otherwise. So just without even, if somebody was to say to you, the Knicks drafted a center in the second round. 
Those two things you could take to the bank. He must have defensive potential to be an anchor. Not saying he can be, but saying he has the potential to be. And he must have a motor. Okay? Now, those are the two baseline, baseline things. No defense, no burn Some of y'all keep forgetting that. This Colette kid, some of y'all keep tripping on. We're going to find out what he got. No defense, no bueno. Some of y'all still don't get that. The boy could play defense, he'll play one day. If he can't, he won't. Okay? Also, we must understand he could be a trade chip. All right? Any of these guys, could, I don't think her party is going to be a trade chip. Matter of fact, of the three, Kolek, uh, Mercury, or whatever his name is, and Hopori. Hopori is the most important one. Because right now, in terms of point guards, the Knicks are not, I, I'm sorry to disappoint some of y'all, but Deuce McBride is, not potentially, he is the backup point guard. You can say, well, I don't think he's a point guard. That's your problem. Tom Thibodeau, who I care more about his opinion than yours, he thinks Deuce McBride is a backup point guard, and he is. Okay? So that's what's going to happen this year, and ain't no rookie changing that. I don't care who he is, especially a rookie drafted in the second round. Some of y'all are tripping on catching them vapors, but no. So that's set, okay? Now, if they bring in another point guard, I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to be no rookie. They're gonna, they got Shake Milton. They could be somebody like that. Or maybe Diakono, Archie Diakono comes back. Something like that will be before this rookie plays, okay? But that that's that. So as far as the center position, that's the most important need for the Knicks right now. Now, they got Mitchell Robinson. Like I said, I don't want him to start. But if he does, that's what we got. Jericho Sims is going to be playing. I don't know if he's going to be in the second unit or the first unit. But the young man's going to get some playing time this season. It's his time. He's worked his tail off. He's earned it. And now it's his time to get his chance to shine. And he's going to get it. I hope he starts. Because I'd rather him start. But that aside, Hook Party. Wiseman, and of course, Precious, for different reasons. I favor Precious over all three because, as I mentioned, his versatility. Hook Party, to me, has potential. He must. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even bothered. So he is potentially somebody that can be the third string center. That's what, he, that's what we're talking about here. We're nitpicking. We're not talking about a, a guy that's going to be dependent on the start. We're talking about third string, where Jericho Sims was when he came. Jericho Sims was the 58th pick. That year you had Mitchell Robinson and you had Nerlens Noel. And then both of them got hurt and they brought in Taj Gibson. Okay. And Jericho that year started five, five games as a rookie because of all the injuries. He started five games. Okay. That was the year the Knicks won 37 games. That was the year you had uh, Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker as your starting backcourt to start that season. Of course, that didn't last. And because that's why that year you started seeing rookie Grimes get more time, then he broke his foot, okay? That was what happened that year. But at the center spot, Jericho Sims was the third string, and he and he started five games because of all that went on. Tom Thibodeau was playing Taj Gibson <laughs> more than, you know, everybody else at, after Mitchell Robinson went down. So that was that year. Then the following year, Nerlens Noel was out, and Jericho played more games. I think he started, I think in his second season, he started like 20-something games. So he started moving up. And that's the way Tibbs does it. It doesn't, it's not like he's going to bring you in as a rookie and all of a sudden you're going to be playing a lot. The, the, the Emmanuel Quickleys of the world are not many. And if they are, they're first-round picks, not second-round picks in Tom Thibodeau's world. So that, that's the way this works now. So now... Jericho Sims there. In his second year, he started 16 games, appeared in 52 games. Last year, he started 11 games, appeared in 45 games. So this is what we're dealing with right now. You, this past season, you had Hartenstein and Mitch Rob. They both got hurt. And then Tom went to Precious a lot more than he went to Jericho, but Jericho was still there. So now Precious is not signed yet. So I'm telling you, it's going to be Jericho Sims. Unless we hear of a Precious sighting. I have no problem with Precious, I can mention, at all. He's my favorite of these because he knows the system. He can play the four or the five. I wouldn't even have a problem with him being the backup five. I would have no problem because he's durable. He's tough. He's got talent and upside, and he knows Tom Thibodeau's system, and he ain't no rookie. So of the three, I'm looking at 
precious. You need one more piece. That's all you're talking about. One more piece. Okay. The Knicks are set and they're stacked and they're ready to compete for a championship right now. So we just need one more piece. We're all Nick picking. We're talking about the third string center. But I favor Precious of the three. But I don't think we're going to go wrong. They're going to make the right decision. The Knicks are going to make the right decision because they know what the hell they do. Y'all enjoy your Tuesday. Shalom.